up until now, we've seen one type of nucleophilic addition mechanism, and that's one that has some form of a base. There's a base catalyzed type reaction. So, for example, if I have a negatively charged nucleophile, which we had in the case of hydride or uh, our alkyl from an organometallic compound, then the electron pair would add to the carbonyl. The electron pair from the pi bond would break and move out onto oxygen to give our intermediate. which in the second step would then be protonated by water, since we didn't have a good leaving group, so we could only do a nucleophilic addition and a nucleophilic acyl substitution reaction. And that's how we would get our product. However, there's another mechanism that we could do, and that is we could do an acid-catalyzed nucleophilic addition mechanism. I'll do one with a ketone this time. It doesn't actually matter. Uh, both of these reactions work with an aldehyde or a ketone. Now in this mechanism, the first thing that's going to happen is our, our carbonyl is somehow going to react with an acid, so it's going to react with a proton. So we'll come back to the same question that we always ask in reactions, and who has electrons and who wants them? There will be a delta plus on the proton side of the acid, and a delta minus on the conjugate base side of the acid. So the proton is who wants electrons, and so then we have to look at our molecule and say who has electrons. The carbonyl oxygen is who has electrons. So this electron pair can go and get protonated, breaking the bond between HA and pushing it onto the conjugate base. So this forms an intermediate of a protonated carbonyl. Now the value of this protonated carbonyl is that we've actually really made this carbonyl more reactive because there's a positive charge here and this bond really wants to break to go out to neutralize the positive charge. So I can take a much weaker nucleophile than we used in the last chapter where we had hydride or organometallics. I can take a much weaker nucleophile now and that nucleophile can still come in, do a nucleophilic addition on our carbonyl because it's already activated. Now a lot of times whatever our nucleophile is at this point will have some kind of a proton on it because if the nucleophile is neutral when it adds, it will, it's giving up electrons so it will become positively charged. So we'll have to use the conjugate base of the acid in the first step to come over, deprotonate our nucleophile. And what you see is that in this type of reaction, the acid is actually catalytic. We add the acid at the beginning we get the same acid back at the end, and so it's not used up by the reaction at all. It's an acid catalysis. So, so the question that you might want to ask yourself is, when would we see a base versus the acid catalyzed mechanism? So the base mechanism is going to work best if we have a strong or negative charge nucleophile. That's when we're going to see the, the base nucleophilic addition mechanism. The acid nucleophilic addition mechanism, or acid catalyzed one, is going to be important if we have a weak or neutral nucleophile. If it's a strong nucleophile, it doesn't need any help, and it can just add to the carbonyl directly. If it has a weak or neutral type nucleophile, it's not strong enough to add to the carbonyl directly, and we need the acid catalyst to make the carbonyl more reactive. In the last chapter, we already saw two reactions of aldehydes and ketones. One was with lithium aluminum hydride first, followed by water. And that just adds H minus. Our nucleophile in that case is H minus. We had another one where we could do the same type of reaction, except now this time we could use an organometallic compound. So like an alkyl lithium compound, for example, followed by water to reprotonate our alkoxide that would form. Where our R group has the negative charge, and that's the nucleophile that's going to add. Okay, those are both strong nucleophiles. Now let's look at a new reaction. In this case, we're going to react our aldehyde or ketone. I chose a ketone, 2-butanone in this case, to react with HCl and sodium cyanide. If we react HCl and sodium cyanide together, it actually forms 
HCN during the reaction. Okay, so we we want to form some HCN, but we want to have excess uh, sodium cyanide around. In the end, HCN will not react with an aldehyde or ketone. It's just not a strong enough reagent. We need the negative charge cyanide ion that we have here in sodium cyanide to be a strong nucleophile, and that cyanide can add to the carbonyl. which then can get protonated by reacting with one of the molecules of HCN that's formed. And in doing so, it also forms another ion of CN- minus or of cyanide that's ready to react again. Now another interesting piece about this reaction is that if we have a cyanohydrin, which is what we call this when you have a cyanide and an alcohol on the same carbon atom, if we treat that with a strong base, it can actually reverse this reaction as it deprotonates the alcohol, pushing this electron pair back down to reform a carbonyl, and then our cyanide group will leave, which actually goes right back to our starting material.